Every phone has a secret and mysterious proprietary software built in. As it turns out, some of them can do very nasty things to your security and privacy. We call these binary blobs, unknown closed source binary code. I'll explain where these blobs are and why they make your phone unsafe. Coming up next. Most of you think that when you're buying an Android or iOS phone that you're really only getting the program from Google and Apple. But that's not actually how it works. The OS is actually dependent on the other proprietary software that are shipped by peripheral manufacturers. The software is just executable code with no source code, so we call that a binary blob. Let me talk to you first about one binary blob and that is the cell baseband modem. This is the worst binary blob of all. In the phone world, most of the patents related to the cell baseband modem are owned by two companies, Qualcomm, which supplies most of the baseband chips for the US phones, and MediaTek, which is a Taiwan-based company that is responsible alone for 1.2 billion phone devices a year. Because of patents, no one can really build cell hardware without licensing it from these two companies and integrating their chips, at least not for LTE and newer baseband protocols. It's really incredible how the mobile phone industry has evolved. We don't even realize that not only has the data tracking been centralized to a few companies, but even the cell traffic is controlled by a couple of companies. Here's the other shocking part. We actually don't know what these baseband modems do. The programs are mysterious. Recently, the baseband modem was determined to be hackable using something called a simjacker attack. The hack allows someone to send silent text messages to the cell baseband modem, and this is interpreted by the modem as control commands, and the modem will actually respond like a website and give access to the device. This requires no login credentials, you can also send commands that tell the phone to dial out or send text messages from that phone. Think about it. If your phone dials an external phone number in secret, it basically becomes a hidden bug because someone can listen in to you. It can also read your messages or intercept your phone call. This is very disturbing people, but it took some security researchers a lot of testing to even uncover some of these threats. This is not the only thing it can do. I'm just telling you what's been discovered. And there's no fix for this many months later. The reason we have this issue is that the software is proprietary to Qualcomm or MediaTek. And the firmware is part of every baseband modem on every phone. Let me tell you something that's also interesting about these devices that are integrated on a phone. These are the SOCs or system on a chip. This means that each SOC chip is a separate computer with a separate CPU, memory, input output, and storage. And the software for the chip or firmware is not fixed. It is updatable remotely. Someone can change the code. On baseband modems, this update procedure is known as FOTA, F-O-T-A, or firmware over the air. So basically, someone can update the software at will. It gets worse. A baseband modem can get updated code from three different areas with likely three different layers of programming. The SIM card, the cell phone carrier area, which is updated on the air as well by the phone OS, and then the main baseband code. And I don't know when that's updated. All of these are proprietary and proven to be hackable. There is speculation that the baseband firmware can be updated by Stingray, which is the tool used by government agencies to spy on cell phones. Stingray is built by the Harris Corporation in Florida and is a major government contractor. They're very secretive. Could they have secret access to the baseband provided by insiders or provided by government contracts with Qualcomm and MediaTek? I don't know the answer to this. But the scary part is that the baseband SOC actually shares memory with the OS of the phone. So in theory, on a regular Android or iOS phone, the baseband can read unencrypted data in main memory. Can it read encryption keys? 
How about keystrokes in the keyboard buffer? How about app data? Again, this is technical speculation. I have no proof that this is being done. All I know is that it can be done. And if a bad player gets the ability to insert programming code unsupervised and undocumented, who knows what can be done? We have to assume that three-letter agencies know how to do this. The Simjacker attack is a documented cybersecurity attack. Stingray intercepting calls and traffic is also well documented in cybersecurity circles and has been duplicated over and over. Now, the GSM cell standard has actually already been open sourced by Osmocom BB, that's the name. So someone can build a baseband modem using GSM with no binary blobs and a standard radio. In fact, you can build a GSM cell network using open source code and regular two-way radios, but this cannot be used on LTE. LTE is still completely proprietary binary blobs. Obviously the same with 5G. And as you know, 3G is disappearing. There are other areas on the phone with SOCs that have binary blobs. The next one is the Wi-Fi adapter. Nowadays, the Wi-Fi adapter does more than basic Wi-Fi. It supplies GPS, GLONASS, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi triangulation. All the little secret tricks that enable location tracking at the very precise level to six feet, even indoors. The firmware code is often supplied in the form of Wi-Fi drivers. Again, these are proprietary unknown code and are preloaded by the operating system. Can these firmware blobs be hacked or replaced? Of course. Do they have backdoors and other flaws? Only someone on the inside that has access to the code knows. And yet, this mysterious code is in billions of phones. The next big area for a binary blob for firmware is the GPU. The GPU, again, is an SOC with a lot of processing power. Next to the main CPU, this is the most powerful chip on the phone. It has a lot of extra memory and has access to main memory. GPUs are so powerful that they are used now to mine cryptocurrencies. Could someone insert custom code in there that could be used as a backdoor? only the manufacturer would know. Or, since this is an example where the binary code is installed by the OS, could it in theory be replaced by a third party? Fortunately, in the new Linux phones coming out in 2020, as far as I'm aware, the GPUs use open source drivers, at Navib for the Librem 5 and Lima for all the OSs on the Pine phone. So at least one blob is eliminated using a Linux phone. The binary blob issue is a complex one. When Purism wanted to build a Linux phone that uses free open source software, they were stuck on the base pane and the Wi-Fi. Those could not be acquired without binary blobs, proprietary software. So the workaround was to use hardware kill switches. Both the Librem 5 and the Pine phone use hardware switches to isolate the SOC of the base band and the Wi-Fi. Also, in both cases, they are connected to the phone as USB peripherals and not tied directly to the motherboard. And yes, even when attached only at the USB bus level, untrusted peripherals could do bad things like inject keystrokes. It's frustrating to see all the little tricks these Linux phone manufacturers have to do because of the way the phone industry runs nowadays. Basically, each phone is shipped as a surveillance device. It now takes extra effort to even undo part of that and will be impossible to stop on a regular Android and iOS device. So, in conclusion, if you have a standard phone made before 2020, they will have secret binary blobs, for sure. Blobs that can be potentially replaced by an attacker. All new Android and iOS phones will also have binary blobs. But if you opt for a Linux phone in 2020, these blobs will get less access and it will be possible to shut them down. Phones have become very reliable surveillance devices. The covert agencies no longer bother with feet on the ground surveillance. We've provided them a number of ways to get even more information via smartphones, Amazon Echo, and smart TVs that listen in. So the only way to have better privacy and security is frankly to dump the cell phone. For Edward Snowden, his life is at stake, so he has no choice but to do that. The rest of us will never be without our cell phones. 
I personally have gone back to using my PC more, which is running Linux. I've limited my phone use to a Linux phone, currently running Ubuntu Touch. But I know that it has a binary blob in a baseband. So I'm eager to switch to a Pine phone in January 2020. That one has a hardware kill switch. This is not a full solution, but there is none at the moment. First, we have to complain and make noise and fight back. We need to not support products that promote surveillance. By the way, somebody told me in a comment that the Quectel modem on a Pine phone has no binary blob and that it is open source. Unfortunately, that is not true. The Quectel modem states a feature called Delta firmware updates on the air. So there you go, updatable blobs. On Linux, the modem may talk to an open source driver like Ophono or or USB WAN, but the actual modem is still driven by a binary blob. Though some of what I said here is speculation, I have clearly separated what is factual and what is speculation. The point is that some of us, particularly those involved in Linux, are beginning to speak out loudly about the dangers of this binary blobs. By the way, on a PC, the biggest binary blob is Windows. And on the Intel processor, the biggest and scariest blob is IME, Intel Management Engine, a backdoor built into most every Intel computer. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if so, maybe you'd like to tap on that thumbs up button and the subscribe button. That's very important to making this channel grow and having other people hear this message. Thank you for watching.